Hey, what's up, guys? This is Cody the Coin Raptor, and welcome to my channel. I'm here to provide you the best crypto content you can find in 10 minutes. So let's start with our Bitcoin chart. Bitcoin had a big run up today. It went and it touched about 24,400 or so. I've marked out this new channel that Bitcoin has decided to uh, get into right now. Uh, that would be the resistance level right now at about 24,000 or so. As you can see, we have a nice upward channel right here. This could potentially be another bear flag. It's entirely possible. But what I'd like to see from a bull perspective is for Bitcoin to come up and push through this level from about 24,000 and push right through to 25,000. So I said previously that the, the next major support level or the next major resistance level right now is going to be about 25,400 or so. So if we can push through this 25,400 level, that would be almost the best case scenario for uh, bears. I mean, for bulls, that would be the best case scenario for bulls if it pushes through that level. However, it's going to need to have significant volume to push through that level. I think what's probably more likely is that we get some nice sideways action going on here. It'll probably stay within this channel for a little bit. Um, it may even come down and retrace here at about 19,500. Uh, I would say that any opportunity to buy below 20,000 is an opportunity that I'm looking at personally. I did make a uh, small buy here at about 22,300 or so as part of my DCA strategy, my dollar cost average strategy, but I'll be looking for Bitcoin to make a nice pullback and uh, I'll be looking to add to that DCA when and if that happens in the next couple of days. So one big thing happened today and I alluded to it previously uh, yesterday on my Twitter account and I said that Tesla earnings are going to come out and Tesla earnings are very important for Bitcoin because Tesla both holds a ton of Bitcoin and because Tesla is representative of the market that we're in right now. So if, uh, if it's a risk on market, you would expect that more investors will be buying Bitcoin and thus more, t more investors will also be buying Tesla stock because Tesla is seen as a very risky stock. So if investors are buying Tesla, it means they're willing to take larger risk. So one thing that happened today is we saw Tesla's earnings. Tesla's earnings, pretty good for the most part. However, there was one big, big issue for Bitcoin. And that's the fact that Tesla sold a majority of their Bitcoin. So they wound up selling 75% of the Bitcoin uh, that they had on the on the balance sheet here, and and they've added nine hundred and thirty six million dollars of cash. So Tesla decided that they were going to shrink their digital assets. They were going to sell a, a majority of it, and now they're only going to have two hundred eighteen million left. Most of this, as far as I'm aware, was sold at a loss because they bought in around thirty thousand or so, and they decided to sell. Uh, sometime in the past quarter, and it was definitely below 30000 in the last quarter. So um, that's that's a big blow for Bitcoin, and Bitcoin did not take that very well in stride. We can go ahead and look at the hourly, and you can see exactly where uh, the, the news came out that, that Bitcoin, uh, that they sold most of their Bitcoin. It's like right here, so with this big uh, volume candle that popped up here, okay? But regardless of that, uh, Bitcoin still hovering around this range, and if we take a look at the RSI, RSI, the uh, relative strength uh, index here, uh, or the relative strength indicator, is at about 60 or so, and it's not over, it's not greatly oversold. We expect to see that above 70 for it to be greatly oversold, but it's definitely getting there, and so I think that we're due for a, a pullback right now. Uh, excuse me, because I think it's it's overbought currently. Uh, it's not greatly overbought. It'll be uh, greatly overbought once it hits 70. Right now it's at 60. So I expect that we're going to be getting a pullback in Bitcoin sometime in the next coming days. Now for Ethereum, Ethereum has been chopping sideways mostly. You can see here it the RSI for Ethereum reached about uh, almost 70 right there. And then it quickly pulled back and now it's at about 65. I think it's it is very overbought, just like with Bitcoin. 
and I'll be looking for that to make a pullback and uh, in, in a few days. Now, Bitcoin and Ethereum are largely going to be driven by the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 prices. So the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 have been on a rip lately. You can see that the last couple of days have been mostly green days, and thus Bitcoin and Ethereum have responded in kind with green days. Okay? Check Bitcoin dominance. Bitcoin dominance is still incredibly low after hitting that 42% that, uh, mark and bouncing up a little bit. Um, I would expect that this is probably going to uh, come up just a little bit, but it's it's definitely trust, it's testing the uptrend right now for this. And when it tests the uptrend, that um, will be a, a positive sign. If Bitcoin dominance falls, that means more investors are getting into altcoins, and that could potentially be a bullish sign and the end of the bear market. So that's something I'm, I'm paying attention to. All right, so for our crypto stories, uh, we have uh, Korean prosecutors raid crypto exchange in the terror probe. So uh, South Korean prosecutors have raided some of these local crypto exchanges as part of a, an ongoing investigation in a Terraphone lab activities. So uh, we know previously that the Korean prosecutors are working together with U.S. Uh, prosecutors in order to figure out what is going on with Terra and Luna in order to figure out the the story behind that and if there is any fraud or if there is any fraudulent activity that was uh, conducted by the the founders and right now um, they've seized transaction records and materials from these exchanges upbit bithub uh, coin one and four other local exchanges so this investigation team is going to be seizing this materials and they're going to be questioning witnesses to determine the size of damages suffered by investors and whether Do Kwan, the CEO of Terra Labs, intentionally caused the collapse of the Terra ecosystem. So I'll be following this story. This is a big crypto story and I I'm very interested in seeing if Do Kwan or any of the other founders of Terra Labs get charged with uh, fraudulent activity. Next. We have data revealing users don't exit the crypto market, but instead diversify their portfolios. And this just kind of builds upon something I've been talking about recently, which is the fact that many of these um, many of these investors have been selling their Bitcoin, but they've been selling their Bitcoin to buy stable coins. All right. So it says, despite average balances and BTC wallets having fallen by almost 30% during the outset of 2022, the balance of stable coins has actually increased. And in fact, average USDT holdings are up 40%. So that's not surprising. If you follow this channel and you follow what I've been talking about, people have been selling Bitcoin and staying in crypto to wait to buy in as soon as the market stabilizes. So um, this is just more more uh, proof that that's actually what's happening right now. And instead of, say, people selling Bitcoin for fiat and just getting out of the crypto space entirely. So I think that this is actually pretty bullish in a bear market when these investors are putting their money into other crypto as opposed to getting out of the crypto space entirely. All right. Next, uh, so uh, we have Coinbase clearing the air and saying that they have no exposure whatsoever to 3AC, and that is uh, big news for people who uh, like Coinbase or Coinbase bulls. Uh, Coinbase claiming that it has no exposure to 3AC, Celsius, Voyager, and other similar counterparties. We've talked many times about how all these companies go into bankruptcy or they're insolvent, and it just has a domino effect in which other companies are affected and could potentially become insolvent or declare bankruptcy because of that. And so Coinbase came out and said, we have nothing to do with those companies. So we are not facing any issues of insolvency whatsoever. And if Coinbase was insolvent or Coinbase was in trouble, financially speaking, that would be a huge blow to the crypto market. That would probably send the price of Bitcoin down massively. But I'll be following the story as more information becomes available. All right, that's all I got for you. This is Cody the Coin Raptor signing out.